This video is meant to be a supplement for the Houdini courses offered at Becker College and Lesley University. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at how we can take our RBD, either our RBD fractured object or a Volnoi fractured object and actually make a simulation out of it. Um, I'm going to use the RBD material fracture as an example instead because this has a few more quirks to it than what the uh, Volnoi fracture does. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to just extend this right shelf so I can see it a little bit better and I'm going to go to the rigid bodies tab. So as we discussed in class there are a lot of buttons up here in the in the rigid body shelf. Uh, a lot of them do almost the same thing with just slightly different options or results. Uh, so with our RBD material fracture, we could we can use the RBD objects button or we can use the RBD fractured object button. And they'll essentially give us the same results. Now, uh, we did also talk about adding an, a null node here to force Houdini to come off of the geometry output. Otherwise, if we don't add that here, uh, Houdini gets kind of confused and it, it, it brings our simulation off of the proxy geometry, which is useful, but it's, it's not what, what we were doing in class. So I'm going to add a null node right here, and we have to make sure we put our display flag on it. Otherwise, uh, Houdini won't uh, come off of this node when we generate our RBD object. And I'll just give this a name. I'm going to call it out uh, geo, oops, geo FRAC for fracture. And my display flag is there. So now if I come back up to the object level and I have my geometry object selected, uh, again, I can click on the RBD objects button or I could do the RBD fractured object button. Now I'm gonna do this one because this is just gonna give us one additional option right at the beginning, but the end result will be identical to using this button. So I'm gonna click on RBD fractured object. And this is the, the additional step that this button gives us that the RBD objects button does not. It asks us if we wanna do an RBD packed object or just simply an RBD fractured object. Uh, we're, we've been working with the packed object because it, it's, it gives us a little bit more optimized simulation. So I'm going to click on RBD packed object. And here at the object level, we should also see that Houdini has generated our, our DOP network. And if I go into the geometry object, we can see that it has added a rest node, an assemble node, and a DOP import node right below the null. So again, the null is what helped us coax Houdini into creating the uh, required nodes here along this path as opposed to the proxy path. And now if I run this simulation, I'll put it in real time here, uh, it should, the object should just fall. Oops, I need to, let me bring my um, display flag and my active node here. And now we'll see that it just falls. So I could come up to the collision shelf and add a ground plane just so I can get some collision here. And now if I play it, the object will fall and just fracture. And we see we get that nice fracture shape that we had designed in the RBD material fracture, which was covered in uh, a different, different video. So the one other thing that I would like to highlight in this video that we discussed in class uh, is in the rigid body shelf, we talked about an RBD glued object, which is very similar to what we can get with an RBD object or an RBD fractured object, except that it also creates a glue network that holds it together. Now, if we've already created a simulation like we've done here, uh, we could glue this piece together by using the glue adjacent. And the, the difference there will be if I, if I use glue adjacent now, as opposed to setting up my RBD fracture using the RBD glued object, the difference will be that the glue adjacent will, will generate all of the glue network in a separate geometry node and then pass that information into the DOP network and back out. 
Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do like we did in class, uh, where we, we set up the initial simulation using the RBD glued object. So the great thing about Houdini is that I don't have to hit control Z or start over. I can back out of most things by deleting. So we discussed that in class. So don't hit control Z, uh, go in there, find the appropriate nodes and, uh, and delete them. So I'm going to basically back out of this so that I'm back to just the RBD material uh, fracture node, which is before the simulation. So obviously we'd have to get rid of the ground plane, get rid of the DOP network. And in my geometry object, I want to get rid of all of the nodes that are below my, my null node, my out null. So now I've just very quickly backed out of the entire simulation network without hitting control Z. So I'm going to come back up to the top level again, the object level, and I'm going to take my, have my geometry object selected. And now I'm going to click on the RBD glued object. And when I do that, Houdini will drop me into the DOP network. And if I hit L to lay this out, we'll see that we have our, here's our dynamic object coming in. And then right next to it, we have our glue network right here. So at this point, the only methods that we have for controlling the glue strength is from the glue const constraint relationship node and in there we have a strength slider right here and it's set to 10,000 which is a really strong uh, glue strength so if I come up to the top level now I need something for this object to collide with so again I'll come over to collisions and put down a ground plane and now when I hit play that object should fall to the ground and not break if I want it to break I can come in here to the DOP network select the glue constraint and lower the strength here. So I'll set it to maybe 100. And let's see what that gives me. And now it starts to fracture. Uh, and I can play with that a little bit, maybe 200. And it might allow a little bit of fracturing, but still keep some pieces together. And it does, so we have that really nice large piece there on top. So this is our first step into being, being able to now control when our fracturing occurs. So in just working with this strength attribute or strength parameter here, um, I could I could keyframe this. So again, it's it, it's starting to give us a, a fair amount of control over our, our fracture. Uh, but what we will start covering next week in class is how we can get even more control by uh, essentially determining various strengths for this glue network and the glue network itself is actually found in our original geometry object so if i go into the geometry object i have oh let me just rearrange these a little bit here now here's our original path rest assemble dop import and now an additional path has been created right here and this is what's generating the glue network in particular this very first node the connect adjacent pieces. If I put my display flag on that, we can see my glue network. They're like little rubber bands holding each piece together. So next week, and then also in a subsequent video, we'll talk about how we can use some of our paint tools to uh, determine the strength we just wire those in here and we can tell some of these glue bonds to be stronger than others which then gives us a lot of really great art directed control over our rigid body fractures